Hey guys, and welcome back to the only channel bringing you BMET tips and tricks to get through the schoolhouse. In class today, we discussed multimeter fundamentals and how to make three types of meter measurements. We learned how to measure voltage, current, and resistance. You then performed the electrical quantities lesson in LabVolt where you covered the basics. LabVolt went over atoms and the charges associated with them and the different forces involved in an electrical circuit. These forces were voltage, current, resistance, and conductance. The next lab volt lesson covered potentiometers and rheostats, which we will discuss more later on in this video. Your last lab volt lesson of the day was about switches and switching concepts. Let's start with utilizing our multimeter to perform our three types of measurements covered in the multimeter fundamentals lecture. We should always be placing our black or common lead on a point of known value in the circuit. The first measurement you learned was the voltage measurement. We perform this measurement by placing the leads of our meter in parallel to the component or components being measured. We then turn on power and read the value displayed on the meter. As you can see from the illustration, the meter is placed across a component or components we want to read. The next measurement we learned about was the current measurement. For this, the meter must be placed in series with the circuit. This is because the current we are measuring must flow through the meter to get an accurate reading. The three steps that we need to make sure are in place are power on, create an open, and then place the leads directly across the opening. In the illustration, you can see that the meter is only measuring what is going through the meter. R2 and R3 both flow through the meter, whereas R1 flows to the positive terminal of the battery. Only R2 and R3 go directly through the meter. The third and final measurement we learned about was a resistance measurement. To perform this measurement, it is like the voltage measurement, but we must make sure that the circuit is off. Our steps to perform this measurement are going to be power off, isolate the component to be measured, and then place the leads across the component to be measured. In the picture, you can see that our resistor value is 5K ohms, and we measure 5K ohms. This brings us to electronic quantities. There are four of them, voltage, current, resistance, and conductance. In course one, we are gonna spend most of our time on the first three. Voltage is the force or potential energy that pushes current through a resistance. Current is the flow of electrons from the negative battery terminal to the positive battery terminal and resistance is the opposition of current flow. The resistance value of a resistor is indicated by a color code. This can be found in your student guide. The first band of the resistor is the first significant digit. The second value is the second significant digit. The third band is the multiplier or the number of zeros you add onto the end of the first two numbers. And the fourth band is the tolerance percentage of the resistor. Our resistor in the illustration is red, brown, orange, and gold. This means that in our calculator, we can punch in 2, 1, 0, 0, 0 equals, and you should get 21K ohms. We can calculate the tolerance range one of two ways. Use what works best for you. For the first method, we can take 21K ohms times 5% or 0 0.05, and that gives us 1.05K ohms. Now we must add this value to find the high end of our range and then subtract the value to find the low end of our range. The second way is to multiply the value by 95% or 0.95 to find our low side tolerance and multiply by 105% or 1.05 to find our high side tolerance. All right, now for two types of variable resistors. We talked about them in class today. Potentiometers and rheostats. Potentiometers have three T's and three terminals and control voltage. Rheostats have two T's, two terminals and control current. The last portion we'll talk about is switches and protection devices. Switches consist of a pole and a throw, indicated here in red and blue. When the pole is not in contact with the throw, there's no current flow. However, when we change the position of the switch and close it, the pole comes in contact with the throw and then allows current to flow. Protection devices are utilized to prevent damage to circuits in the event of an overcurrent situation. Fast blow fuses open instantaneously, where a slow blow fuse is open after a period of time passes and the current is exceeded. Magnetic and thermal circuit breakers open instantly, but can be manually reset. All right guys, so we covered how to measure voltage, current, and resistance. We moved on to electrical quantities, talked about some resistor color codes, determined how to tell a potentiometer and a rheostat apart. Then we took a quick look at switches and protection devices. As always, stay classy and keep your head up.